This week, for Five Minute Gratitudes, I'm going to be talking about a god who is very important to me, Frey. Like the name of his sister Freya, which translates as Lady, Frey is also a titular name, which translates as Lord. Known as Ing to the Saxons, and sometimes referred to as Ingafre or Ingvi, it is possible that the commonly used Frey is actually his title and Ing his name. He's said to be the direct ancestor of the Swedish royal family in the same way that many European royal houses can be traced back to Odin. Frey is first and foremost a fertility god. He is often portrayed in statues and grave finds with exaggerated genitalia to emphasise it. This is power both over fertility of the land in the form of crops and livestock and fertility in people. It is Frey who is most often called upon when sowing seeds and thanked when collecting the harvest, and Frey who is looked to by those seeking to have children. Unlike in some other faiths, Sex and sexuality are not considered in any way sinful or unclean in heathen practices. The physical manifestation of fertility is to be enjoyed and celebrated, not shunned, and this idea is an important part of the worship of Frey. Frey is also a god of peace, but this does not mean that he is not a warrior. He is said to have come to Asgard as a hostage as part of a peace treaty at the end of the Aesir-Vanir War. He is a protector and upholder of peace, and this means he must be prepared to enforce it. He is said to do this using his magical sword, which fights by itself. As we will see, it is the loss of this sword which will eventually lead to his fall at the hands of Surt at Ragnarok. One of the most famous stories about Frey is that in which he convinces the Jotun Gerd to marry him. The story goes that Frey sees Gerd from a distance and instantly falls in love with her. He gives his servant, Skinnir, his horse and his magical sword and dispatches him with a proposition, marriage. Frey gets the girl, but in the process loses his sword, a loss that will be his doom. Frey was prepared to do anything and give up anything for the woman he loved, even if it eventually would cost him his life. There are several symbols associated with Frey. The first is his golden boar, Gullumbusti, which could run through air and water better than any horse. This great boar was made for Frey by the dwarfs Brock and Etri. At the same time, another powerful item associated with Frey was created by the sons of Ivaldi, his great ship, Skiff Blathnir. Said to be the finest of ships, it can be folded up like a cloth and carried in a pocket, but when unfolded, it's large enough to carry all the gods. Thirdly, Frey is associated with a horse cult. There is evidence of horses being sacrificed to Frey. There is also the story of the horse Frey Faxi, which is sacrificed to the god, and nobody was allowed to ride. This is not the only Frey Faxi referenced in the sagas that is sacred to Frey, and the horses were often said to be kept around his temples. Frey is also said to ride in a wagon, and this is in keeping with the practice of parading fertility gods in wagons, which was observed by Tacitus and is mentioned in a rune poem. We know that Frey was considered a very important god by our ancestors for several reasons. One is that his statue stood alongside those of Thor and Odin at Uppsala. Another is that throughout the Icelandic sagas, there are references to Frey's Gothis, Gothar, who were specifically dedicated to the god. There were also said to be temples dedicated specifically to Frey. The large geographical area of his worship is also shown in the number of place names that include one or more variations of his name. Frey is also an important god when it comes to the runes, with the rune Ingus named for him. De Montfort summarises, Ingus is a rune of sexuality, fertility, family lines and ancestry. Yet ultimately, this rune turns our attention to the great river of life, flowing from the ancestral past, through the sexual act, into the present and on to future generations. There's so much more that I would like to say about Frey, uh, but this is as much as I can cram into the time allowed for this video. I'll finish the video with a poem I wrote about my own experience with Frey. In the days of my youth, I travelled off north with my family, free of concerns, not seeking out knowledge, not looking for gods, but we choose not how the spindle turns. Before those sweet summer days in the trees between the lakes, I'd been told there was only one Lord, but a presence I felt, and a presence I knew, amongst the glaciers, forests and fjords. Though it felt so familiar, so nourishing and pure, I knew not the name of this force. 
but I felt like he'd been there since I was but a boy, though I tried, I knew not the source. I called out to the trees, to the rocks and the streams, who is this plentiful one, who nourishes and nurtures with fertility and love, with me since my life was begun? Then the answer came, though I know not from where, was it from spirit, alf or white? They call him in, they call him lord, boar rider, his feast on Yule night. He is our king, our ancestor, our god, with folded ship he sails the sea, with antler in hand and gird as his bride, he fills his dear followers with glee. Our lord of peace, shining van, with us through night and by day, and you are like us, you follow our king, and now you know his name is Bray.